Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on solving the ordinary differential equations. In the previous lectures, we looked at the general approach that we used uh, to implement uh, solving ODEs in Java. And the idea was to create a sequence that converges to the value of the function at each point. And then uh, if the error of the method that we were using was not good enough, uh, we used Richardson acceleration. And eventually we looked at the most commonly used method, which was the Range Kuta first order. We said that if f of x and y does not depend on y, the fourth order Range Kuta becomes Simpson's method. And we always use uniform partitioning to partition from A to B. And A is the initial point. B is the point that we're trying to solve for. Y, find the value of the function Y of B at this point. And then we said that the first order Rang Kuta is basically the Euler method. The second order Rang Kuta is the uh, midpoint method. And eventually the fourth order Rang Kuta is uh, the most commonly used because it has a good trade-off between the number of function calculations, how many times we need to calculate f of x and y, and the accuracy of the error or the order of the error, all right? So we try to stick with Range Kuta 4 from now on when we talk about uh, solving ordinary differential equations. But then the next thing in terms of solving ordinary differential equations is that so far we only have looked, uh, we only have looked at one differential equation y prime equals f of x and y all right now the question is what happens if we have multiple differential equations like y prime equals f of x y z and z prime equals g of x y z this is called a system of uh, ordinary differential equation all right so system of all these most of the time especially in physics we have several functions coupled to each other via differential equations right this forms a system of first order ODEs. Let's say we have M functions. So we end up with M equations, Y1, Y2, and uh, YM. Okay? And then uh, uh, we are looking for the values of these M functions. And we are given M equations f1 of x, y1, y2, ym, f2 of x, y1, y2, ym, all the way to fm. Note that if we have m functions, we should have m equations. If we have less than that, then there is no unique solution. If we have more than that, then uh, there, is, there could be no solution because the equations may not, may not end up being consistent, right? If we take only m m of those equations as solved and then put it to the m plus one equation the solution may not be consistent all right so the goal is to find the solution of these functions y1 y2 ym using all these m equations uh, and the number of equations must be m equal to the number of uh, functions and we need m initial conditions so before we only had one equation, so we only needed one initial condition. Here we need m initial conditions. One initial condition for each function. So y1 of x0 is y1 with the annotation 0, y2 x0 is y2 with the annotation 0, all the, okay? Now again, we can implement a general method and then basically a, a general procedure and we can use any of the previously previously previous method that we looked at like Euler midpoint Range Kuta let's say RK4 so we're going to define all of these FK equations as functional interface okay so the functional interface takes X and an array of M variables and returns an array of M values right and then uh, we can apply Euler method uh, let, instead of Euler let's say uh, Okay, we can apply Euler or uh, let's say particular method, particular method to all functions in each step. All right. So we basically generate the equation. For example, uh, okay, let's keep this as Euler because this equation here is for Euler. So 
but the same exact uh, procedure can be done for the midpoint method or Runge Kutta method. So here I'm just writing the, the procedure for the Euler method. So we define the functional interface that represents uh, or returns the value, m values, or an array of m values for m all these m equations. And then we create we use the Euler method apply the Euler method to all functions in each step and then we create the Euler sequence, the Euler iteration yk at x plus h is yk at x plus h times fk at x y1, y2, yn, alright? and then we create the Euler sequence for each function and then we can apply Richard, fourth order Richardson acceleration if you use Runge Kutta fourth order, we don't need to use the Richardson acceleration, alright? so that's the idea However, it's much easier to write it in a vector form. So we have a, a vector of m functions, y1, y2, ym. So the left hand side becomes the derivative of a vector. And then uh, for Euler, the right hand side becomes a vector at each step plus h times f. f is a vector. That is, uh, the components are f1, f2, to all the way to fm. So in a vector way, in a vector form, and here again, the f vector is calculated at x and vector y at the step k, all right? So now instead of having a double function, a function which is a number, now we have vectors. But the structure of the code, the way we create the Euler sequence or Runge Kutta sequence is exactly the same as before. Whenever we have y, we have to replace it with an, a vector. And the way I suggest to do it is uh, like this in Java when we want to do implement. I start with creating an object called ND array. This array is an object, all right? And what it does, it represents an array of M, uh, basically a double array. But then the, the, the reason that we're implementing the array uh, as an object, because we then overload the operators plus, minus, times, division for the array, okay? Because by default, Java, just a double array in Java doesn't allow you to do a plus or minus between them. You cannot overload the operator. So I create this ND array that holds an array of double values. But then I also implement the operator overloading, right? ND array is just an array with uh, some number of components, which also supports the operator overloading. Because here, if I have, a, I'm representing the vectors with an array, ND array. If I want to multiply h or this vector f by h and then add it to another vector, I cannot simply do it for n uh, double arrays. So I use an object and op overload the operators. And then uh, I another thing that we need to note that we are generating a sequence for all the m uh, simultaneously. We're generating we are generating a, a sequence for the vector that has m components, right? So our sequence is basically always an array and each component is a sequence that is representing each of these functions. So I define also an array sequence and it has one public abstract method which, is, which returns ND array and basically evaluates the array sequence at a given index, all right? So this array sequence is representing a, a vector, each component of that vector is a sequence. And then if I want to get the sequence that represents the particular component of this array, I define a method, a default method called at index, so, and then use a lambda expression. n goes to evaluate at n, returns an nd array, and then I just look at the index component, the component which is defined by this index number at the, for this nd array, okay? So let's uh, head to Eclipse, and I'm going to show you first the uh, ND array. So I have added the ND array to the sequence package, the project that we had before, ND array. And this ND array is just a wrapper for a, a wrapper class for double array with support for operator overloading. That's the only reason we're doing this wrapper because we want to be able to do operator overloading and directly add the ND array objects to get it there. 
So this any array has a dimension and just holds the internally manages or holds the double array x. All right. And then the constructor takes a var arg argument of a double array and then assigns the deem the assigns it to the internal x array and then the dimension is just the length of the array. And then uh, the method at ret returns the value of the double array at the index i. All right. We have a two string method and then there is a method called array that actually returns the double representation, double array representation of the ND array. Just returns x, right? Which is double array. And the dim is just, uh, just returns the dimension. And these are all the operator overloading methods. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And also a static assignment, the value of method. So the value of method, uh, uh, basically this is the equality overloading or the assignment, assignment operator. So basically if I, if I say ND array like D equals a new double, for example, uh, one, two, it creates an ND array by calling the value of method on this uh, double array, something like that. And then we have add, we can add a double value to in ND array, which adds the double value to all the component of the ND array. We can add it to add another double array to the ND array. So it adds a component by component. And we actually need to care about, we probably need to have an exception here to check the, make sure that the length of the two arrays are equal. But for simplicity, I'm ignoring that at the moment. Add reverse. Basically, this uh, this is basically v plus the ND array, and again, it's a double double array. It's just v plus this component by component. Add to ND array to an ND array. Add reverse ND array to ND array. Subtract from a double. Subtract from a uh, double array. Subtract reverse. Subtract from an ND array. Subtract reverse. Multiply by a number, multiply reverse, and note that uh, multiply to an ND array doesn't make sense, but uh, we're defining it as a component-wise, basically component-wise multiplication, component-wise multiplication. So this is how we're defining that. Multiply reverse, again component-wise. Divide by a number, divide by an ND array. Again, it's component-wise division, component-wise division. And then reverse division, and then negation, minus D. So we take the array, negate each component, and return a new ND array, all right? So this, this is just because we want to be able to easily uh, adapt the previous uh, method that we had for in the ODE solver. So this was for solving an a scalar equation. Now we want to do exactly the same uh, sequence. But here, instead of having double values, we want to have an ND array. So that, uh, and the ND array supports our operator overloading. So the equation doesn't really change. And in each iteration, it gives us a, uh, an array sequence, a sequence that is basically a vector of N uh, sequences. So in order to do that, I have also implemented the array sequence and it returns an ND object. So basically when we say evaluate at some index, it returns a uh, vector that has M components, right? And if I want to get a sequence which is representing the uh, some component, I just evaluate, I use a lambda expression. And then uh, N goes to this lambda expression is from the sequence interface. So n goes to evaluate n. So this is a n-dimensional array at, and then use at. At method in the nd array represents, uh, returns a number, a double. All right? So this is how we're doing using lambda expression and a default method to also get a sequence representation of each component. And then we have all the previously methods that we developed for the sequence interface. They already are, we don't need to change any code because operator overloading is supported by the ND array. And all these transformations, Aitken, Shanks, all of them are linear uh, things. So 
they just involve multiplication and division and other stuff recharge zone everything so it's already uh, applicable to the array sequence interface as well and the trick was to instead of having a double array here we're returning an nd array object and the nd array supports operator overloading so it makes the code much cleaner all right now that i have this nd array i create an object called od system solver and uh, in order to do that i just like the derive function that represents the double value a single a scalar f of x and y i define a derive n function so it represents an nd array so basically represents represents an nd dimensional array this is basically f1 of x y1 y2 etc f2 etc all the way to fn if we have n equations and the method here is values it has a plural s here so in the ODA system solver, we have the derive n function x0. So the initial point is a, still a scalar because this is an ordinary differential equation. And by definition, ordinary differential equation has only one variable x or in physics or engineering is mostly time t. So y1, y2, ym, all of these are functions of x. Okay. That's why x0 is still a double. But the initial condition now, it's an array of double values. So y0 is array. And then we also have this extra parameter num equations. And in the constructor for the ODE system solver, we pass in our n equations as the function. This is an array function. This is the drive n function. And then the initial point and the initial condition as a varorg parameter. It's always better to use varorg and instead of uh, an array of double but the caveat is that the var arg argument must always comes at the end of the list so if we cannot put it before double x zero it should always be the end which is the case here so i'm just defining the array of the initial condition as a var arg and the number of equations is just the length of uh, how many uh, equation functions we have in the initial conditions now we see the dimension of the function and the, and the y0 should uh, agree, but I'm not checking for that for simplicity. And then let's say we want to create an Euler sequence. So this Euler sequence should give me an array sequence, basically a vector that has each component of that vector or array is a sequence by itself. So again, uh, if n is equal to 0, we return an nd array. Okay, Remember, note that I'm using a multi-line lambda expression. So when I do n goes to nd array y0, it automatically gives me an array sequence object. And if uh, n is greater than 0, what we do is uh, the code is very similar to the scalar case. So y, instead of being a double, is now an nd array from y0 and x is still the scalar and then we have ndra funk vals because now the funk vals or evaluation of the function gives me a uh, double array which i need to convert it to uh, an ndra actually i do not need to convert it to ndra because i believe because we have the value of method so if I say that, okay, this nd array funk vals is equal to the array, it should be able to call the value of method. But to make sure that uh, it doesn't fail at some point, or maybe the compiler messes up something, so we are creating a new nd array anyways. So funk values, it returns a double array, and we're converting to nd array, and then uh, now the multiplication and summation are uh, overloaded for the nd arrays so y is nd array which starts from y0 and then h times funk vals assigns it back to y so in each loop of the four iteration in each iteration y becomes y1 x1 y2 x2 etc and y remains a vector or an uh, remains a vector nd array and because i'm using the lambda expression when i return y it automatically converts it to the array sequence okay that's the beauty of using a lambda expression 
So for the Euler, we calculate with the equation is y plus y equals y plus h times Frank valve. We evaluating the vector and the vector is Frank dot values at x and y dot array. The reason that I'm converting the y and the array to a double because just the way I defined the derivative function using a varorg and this is a double array not an nd array so I call the array method on the nd array to get an array representation of the nd array okay and then we have the Euler which takes the Euler sequence at point x1 so the Euler sequence is an array sequence so it's a vector of n component and then does a Richardson, fourth order Richardson, and then evaluates it at 10 or some number of points, maybe 10, 20. I believe for the scalar one, we evaluate that, yeah, we evaluate it at 100. But here, for simplicity, I'm evaluating at 10, let's say 15. And this basically becomes an ND array, okay? Because the evaluate method in the uh, array sequence returns an ND array. And then I call the uh, array method in the ND array to convert the ND array object into a double array because for users for someone who's using this API it's easier to deal with uh, arrays instead of uh, ND arrays and then we have the Euler that uh, evaluates uh, at uh, an array at x1 one thing that I like to emphasize here is that uh, Uh, we are returning a vector, right? So if I'm calculating at, uh, if I'm trying to calculate for a array of x values, then uh, each row of the, basically each function must uh, return an array, a double array. So now I have n functions, so it becomes a two-dimensional function, a two-dimensional array. That's why I'm returning a two-dimensional double array. And each row is representing the values of one of the functions. So the first row is the values of the first function y1 evaluated at all these uh, x points. The second row is the values of the second function evaluated at all these uh, points. And just like before, I'm using the trick that we used for the, the fact that we calculate at some point and then use that value as the initial condition for the next point. This helps with the stability of the ordinary differential equation. All right? So I create, I call the Euler method, returns an array of double values, and then uh, assign the kth row, uh, basically, and this is the values of all the functions at the particular point. So that's why it's assigned to the one column of the double array. And then I update the uh, initial conditions and then make sure that I put them back. All right. So uh, let's head back to our slides. So this is the general idea using array sequence and the arrays objects so that the upper the overloading supported and the implementation becomes extremely simple. And here's uh, example one. So in the example one, I looked at the decoupled equations. In the decoupled, I have two equations, y1 prime equals x, y2 prime equals one. So y1, y1 prime doesn't depend on y2, and y2 prime doesn't depend on y1. So instead of solving these together as a system of two equations, I can solve them separately using the method that we had before. But here, I'm, I'll solve the two equations simultaneously so I have the initial conditions for the two and uh, each of them has a closed form solution the first one is 0.5x squared plus 1 and the second one is just x it's linear the first one is quadratic and I'm going to use a fourth order Ranga Kuta and again if we go back to the code for the OD system solver the Euler, the Ranga Kuta implementation is exactly the same as before. We have k1, k2, k3, k4 defined as nd arrays, and then y n plus one is y n plus k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4 over six, and then x n plus one is x n plus h. And because this is a lambda expression, when I return y, it automatically returns an array sequence. 
And again, the same thing for calculating at an array of x values and returning a double, a two-dimensional array. Each row represents the values of one function, all right? Okay, so let's call this again example one. And uh, I, as, again, the style of the code is exactly the same as before that we had for a scalar equations or one equation. Here, instead of derive function, we have derive n function, which takes x and y. But y here is, a, uh, is an array, y0, y1, y2, okay? And the return type is an array. So what is, so basically the return type, the first component represents the y0 prime. So y0 prime is basically the first function, which should be x. The second component represents y1 y, y prime, which is the second equation, and it should be one, all right? So that's how we're defining the, uh, the vector of the f functions, f of x and all the y. And x0 is zero, that's the initial condition. Note that all the functions must have the same initial point, initial condition. And here they all are defined at zero. And then I have an array of two components and I'm immediately initializing it with one, one. So y0 is now a vector or an array with two components, one and one. And, one. and then I define my OD system solver, passing the n-dimensional function and x0 and the n-dimensional y0, n-dimensional initial conditions. And then you know the routine. So we create an array of x values from zero to 15, 1000 points. And I calculate the exact solutions using this dense number of x points, all right? And then I define an x, uh, a coarse uh, array, xod, which only has 20 points because I just want to discreetly see these markers. And then call the Range Kuta method on this array, XOD, and it returns a two dimensional double array. I create my figure. So each row of uh, the values of each row represents the values of one of the functions. So if I want to write uh, plot the second y2, I say plot x and y2 exact with color B, and then XOD, y values, the first, uh, basically the second row. So y values at index zero is the first row, y values at index one is the second row. And that returns the values of the second function, which is y2 here, all right? And as you can see, there is a perfect match. And uh, yes, this should be y2. And then if I, similarly, I can plot y1, so x and y1 exact, x, o, d, y values at index zero and it gives me the exact solution, okay? Now there is another example here, and uh, this example on the other end is a coupled equation, because most of the time in physics and engineering problems, we have coupled system of equations. So y, y prime equals y2, y2 prime equals minus y1, and this minus one has a important physical uh, uh, meaning or interpretation. But we don't care about that the more, we just care about the math. So y, y prime, y1 prime is y2, y2 prime is minus y1. And this is a system of coupled equations. So we cannot use previous methods for a scalar equations to solve these. So we have to solve these two equations simultaneously together. And again, we have the initial conditions. Both of them are defined at the same x point, which is zero. One of the function is zero, one of the function is one. And it turns out this system of equation has closed form solution. Y1 is sine of x and Y2 is cosine of x. And we can, we can confirm that they satisfy these differential equations and they also satisfy the initial conditions. So these are the unique solutions. I'm going to use uh, exactly the same code that we, we had before, but update the drive n function, update the initial conditions, and use Euler plus fourth order Richardson to get the solution. I mean, it's always recommended to use fourth order Range Kuta, but here I'm just showing you that Euler plus fourth order Richardson also gives us a very accurate result, anyways. So, derive function x and y, y is a vector, an array, 
and uh, it must return a 2D array. The first component represents y0 prime or the first y prime, which is y2, and y2 is the, com the second component of the y vector at index one. And then the second component here is y1 prime, which is minus y0. That's why we're returning minus y0. x0 is 0, and y0, the initial conditions, uh, uh, the first function is 0, the second function is 1. And the rest is very similar to before. We create our ODE system solver, passing the n-dimensional function, x0, the initial point and initial condition, which is n-dimensional. Create our uh, dense array from 0 to 20 that has 1,000 values and calculate the uh, y1, y2 exact. y1 exact is sine, y1, y2 exact is cosine. And then create a coarse version of the X array, which has only 100 points. So 0 to 20, 100 points. And then uh, use the OD solver object and call the Euler method that takes an array of X values and returns a two dimensional array. Each row represents the solution for one of the functions. And let's say I'm uh, plotting Y1 exact. So X and Y1 exact. This is the blue curve with color B. And then uh, I want to plot the ODE solver solution. So X Euler and Y Euler at row zero. So the zeroth row or the first row of this double array represents Y zero. The zeroth component of this vector, which is our first function here, Y one. And then we plot the Y solution. And as you can see, we get the perfect match. And then if I want to plot the second function, here I call y Euler at index 1, which is the, the solution for the second function, and it gives me the cosine. So we see that we actually can solve a system or ordinary differential equations together, and it gives us uh, all the functions simultaneously, which is uh, very good. It's, uh, it's really good that we can do that. And the only requirement is that uh, we, on the left-hand side, we should have y1 prime, y2 prime, y3 prime, etc. On the right-hand side, we can have any function of x, y1, y2, etc. It could be a nonlinear function, linear function, but uh, we should not have any singularities over the interval that we are trying to solve the functions. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and uh, I will have more lectures in the future. So please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.